Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, revisiting a bit of a, a classic. Um, and I've got it, I've got it in my mind that this is sort of like being reintroduced, but I think I'm wrong. I think this has been around since it was first brewed, but I've never really seen it. And I, I don't know what it, what a, about it was. I can't speak today. I don't know. Oh, fucking hell. I don't know what, and by the way, apologies about the slightly POV blowjob camera angle that I've got going on. Uh, wonderful view of the double chin though. Um, yeah, I don't know why I was drawn to pick up a bottle of this um, when I was in Brewdog Manchester um, the other day. Um, I used to drink this a uh, shit ton uh, when I was getting into craft beer. And I remember they'd even like had a, I don't know if it was the same recipe or slight tweaked version in Tesco's um, a while back. And yeah, this was one of those beers that really got me into hoppy, you know, abrasive IPAs. And I used to always get like uh, two thirds of this when I went to Brewdog. So this is Brewdog's Jackhammer, which is described as a ruthless India Pale Ale, coming in at 7.2% ABV. Uh, I bought it because I was like, oh, I've not seen that for a while. And I'm sure someone posted about it on one of the groups or Instagram that, look what's back, but I've probably imagined it. It's probably been a beer that's been around pretty much since it was first brewed, as I said. And I'm using this fucking awful bottle opener which really winds me up and I keep believing the proper bottle opener down, downstairs so I'm going to have to buy a new one because it just doesn't work it doesn't function properly as a bottle opener it, it functions exactly what it looks like and I think they've just done that um, whoever sold it but anyway so got brand appropriate glassware because I'm a true professional so uh, yeah let's see how time has treated this beer whether it is uh, reintroduced or if it has been around all the time, just out of view. Because I know they had like the Mr. President, uh, which was like a double IPA, which I thought was to replace it. But I might have even done, when I did the Mr. President review, uh, a bit of a head-to-head -head between this. Picked up from Tesco's. I don't know, um, nor do I care to remember. But um, yeah, it's always good. I've not used this glass for a while. Uh, it's always good to go back to these sorts of beers that you used to drink, and um, I'm sure it'll serve as a, an interesting video regardless. So, Beer in the Glass then, um, classic sort of West Coast IPA. Golden, slightly amber. Uh, there's a, it's pretty much crystal clear. There's the most minimal of um, haze in there. Because not every IPA has to be, you know, where you dip your finger and your finger's covered in, like, yellow goop um but yeah it looks pretty nice um <laughs> with about one finger's worth of a slightly off-white head uh yeah it looks like a good old-fashioned old school ipa so let's see what we get on the nose <sighs> ranchers fruit pastel mao am it's got a sweetness there's a stickiness there a little bit of resin Slight hint of grapefruit. It smells like I'm drinking this back in like 2012. <sighs> yeah, it takes me back when I really first started this journey, going from bar to bar. But um, yeah, 7.2%. It's not the most aromatic of beers, but it smells pretty okay. So uh, let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Lovely bitterness on the back end. It's not a palate wrecker. It's not too abrasive or anything like that. But it's got a distinct bitterness. A little bit thin though on the body. Very resiny. Very piney and herbal. There's a little bit of grapefruit in there. Slight citrus. There's a sweetness in there. But that bitterness is really building up on the back end. It's got that sort of, there's like an, a hint of ethanol about it. Uh, let's see. Best before is the 10th of December, 
it started off a, like, a little bit promising. It started off uh, a little bit promising, but um, <coughs> it's a little bit watery. A little bit bland. I don't remember it being this toned down. It's got like the, the hop profile of a, a session pale ale. It really does. It reminds me of like um, Neck Oil from Beavertown, which is quite a boring beer. Always has been, always will be. Um, not to compare Brewdog and Beavertown, of course, it's an easy comparison to make. Although Beaver Town are, you know, at least Brewdogs still have their sort of uh, independence. Although every fucking city in the world seems to have a Brewdog bar. Um, yeah, that bitterness was actually really quite nice uh, for the first few sips, but it just has a really sort of like ethanol sort of taste to it. It's quite harsh, but harsh in a bland way. There's really not much flavour going on. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a waste of time and waste of money, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's not good. And I remember it being much, 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 much more better uh, back in the day. But then again, my palate has probably come a long way since then. Um, hasn't really. I've still got a stupid palate, let's be honest. But I, I'm not a fan. I'm not going to drink the rest of it. Um, it's not awful. Mm -hmm. It's just... It goes back to that point. If I'm not enjoying a beer, I don't care if I've paid for it. I don't care if it's been you know, bought for me or whatever. If I'm not enjoying it and I'm just getting that ABV payoff... I don't want to finish it. I just really don't want to finish it. It's like boozy without being harsh. And it's sort of like... it's. It reminds me... The, the alcohol content and the sort of like aftertaste reminds me of like a triple IPA. A triple West Coast IPA. Which are... Actually, as much as I love like really hazy, fruity triple IPAs... Old school triple IPAs I just find to be just way too abrasive and unpleasant for the most part, and I'd I'd put put it in this put it in that category, but it's just boring. It's just really fucking dull. It really, really is. Um, it's not Brewdog's greatest beer, um, but I had a small batch uh, hazy IPA when I was in Brewdog. Comma was called Ju Duopolis, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely banging, like one of the best IPAs that I've had from Brewdog. Because uh, let's be honest, a lot of their IPAs are really missing the mark. Especially my experience with the fanzine stuff. But then again, you've got East Coast Crush. When you could get it in four packs cheap at your local co-op, it's an absolute bargain. Um, I did actually intend getting a couple of four packs from the Brewdog bar. But for some reason, that the Manchester Brewdog. They don't have the, the four packs on the top shelf, which is a real shame because that's just perfect grab and go sort of territory. But I got a little bit excited when I saw a bottle of this on the shelf. Um, and now I'm drinking it. I'm like, it's just a nothing. It's such a shame. It really, really is. Am I going to hold this against Brewdog? No, I'll always go to a Brewdog bar if it's in a city that I'm visiting. Um, if not for the sort of like seasonal stuff uh but for the the guest list and i got some interesting beers uh, from the fridge so the fridges are always good for the most part liverpool's fridges haven't been too good but then again their guest selection not really up to scratch either but uh, just getting nothing from it it's really doing nothing to me it's really thin it is really thin and it's not holding the hops. It it tastes like it's an old um, IPA. It tastes like a really old bottle. But I can't imagine it would be when the best before date is December 2020. I think drinking this, it's such a waste 
Um, Brewdog are wasting so much water, hops, malts, barley, whatever in this. They really, really are. I think they should just put a jackhammer to jackhammer and rip up the pavement and start again. And lay a new layer of tarmac on top with another um, roofless um, IPA. That's a real shame because that was at one point. It's sort of like what happened to um, Dead Pony Club. The two beers that I drink a hell of a lot of. But having them recently, I'm just like, it's like piss. It's like slightly hoppy piss. Uh, Punk's been quite good uh, recently. Um, got a four pack of Elvis juice, which was tasted in absolutely fantastic. So I'm not going to sit here and just mindlessly trash Brewdog. Um, I just think this beer is a little bit wank, to be honest. Just put it out there. In terms of a rating, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. Um, I'm not going to finish the rest of this. That's going down the sink. Yeah, if you tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. And uh, yeah, a little bit of a waste of money, but hey, how they can't all be winners, can they? Go check out my Brewdog playlist for quite a few better beers than that one. Go check out Brewdog, and uh, more importantly, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. And if you tried this recently, let me know your thoughts, opinions, or give me recommendations of some Brewdog Pale stuff that you've really enjoyed. Always interested to hear that, even though I've fallen behind on comments again. So... I'm just trash people, so uh, you all know that, and yet yeah, you come back to watch these absolutely awful videos. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to cut the video off here. Her, I've been in Leeds for the weekend, it's rubbing off on me. Oh no, oh no, I've been in Leeds, haven't I? Oh no, on train, like Manchester, oh my god. Anyway, I sound like a student, don't I? Anyway, cheers for watching, <laughs> I shall hopefully see you all later, and... Apologies to the people of Leeds. I fucking love your city.